Lynn Sanity, what a time to be alive. Welcome to Up and Adams. I'm in New York, away from our LA studio. We'll be back there next week. Uh, Hamilton is here. Mark Ingram, like I said, Shams will stop by. I'm going to the Knicks game tonight. Very excited. Had a real New Yorkie trip. Did the whole Broadway thing. Uh, drank my body weight in espresso martinis last evening. It's a great day. We want to hear from you and what you thought about this epic, record-setting trade deadline day. Hit us up at Up and Adam Show right now. 12 players. Check this out. Unbelievable. 12 players got moved yesterday afternoon. Most notably, we saw pass rusher Bradley Chubb head to Miami. TJ Hawkinson moved within the division. Doesn't happen every day. He goes to Minnesota. And the big surprise of the day, Calvin Ridley. Oh, remember him? Yep, he moves from Atlanta to Jacksonville. We are grading a bunch of those big deals uh, after the commercial break. But some of the more notable moves of the day were the ones that were not made. So let me put this down so I don't throw it. Packers, I'm talking to you. I feel like I do this every day on the show. I'm talking down the barrel of a camera lens to Green Bay, to Goody, to whatever. Why? Why do you refuse to do anything significant to help out Aaron Rodgers? I am not even saying go full F them picks mode, but maybe go F a bunch or a good deal or a substantial amount of those picks mode for your aging back-to-back -back MVP. Time is a ticking. It's running out. You know it. We know it. What is the secret here? It has been three years. It's hard to, to not support your quarterback in a way. It's almost like you're trying to do it, and it's like an accomplishment that maybe deserves some credit because it's a, it doesn't seem like it's an easy thing to neglect helping your quarterback. Is this a stubborn thing is my question. Is this like a, a, a football acumen thing? I'm, I would be surprised if that's the case. This is Green Bay, the most storied franchise in the NFL. You had a chance to make up for all of this yesterday, and you continue to do nothing. So during this show, it's only an hour long, I'm going to keep asking my good friend Mark Voto, who's hanging out with me in New York, has OBJ signed yet? Has OBJ signed to Green Bay? It's going to happen I'm going to ask you every two minutes on this show because that's the only way that I can take back anything or any of the venom I feel for this team. Uh, but I don't blame Packers fans for freaking out. But I also was not surprised that they didn't make a move. I was a bit surprised about the rest of the division, adding insult to injury, making you look bad, Green Bay. If you look at all the receivers moved over the past few weeks, uh, as we take a look here, let's do it. You know, you've got Kadarius Tony, Chase Claypool, TJ Hawkinson. I mean, that's a lot of NFC North action going on. The Bears, <laughs> what the hell's happening? The Bears get aggressive and land support for Justin Fields? I didn't see that coming. Second rounder for Chase Claypool. The Vikings, they go all in. What a move, couldn't love it more. I'm gonna grade that an A plus in the next segment they get tj hawkinson packers have the 26th ranked offense overall bottom 10 pass offense I, I don't even know what to say about this it's insane 2020 i mean they draft jordan love over t higgins everybody talked about that they always go defense over adding people for uh our guy aaron Rodgers, and they weren't aggressive enough to move up a few spots they could you tell me that packers couldn't have justin jefferson who's you know smokes everybody and and any uh, thing that he has any game in the division out the division you could have had cd lamb too in 2021 let's keep going here the packers go db they took eric stokes in the first round 2022 the packers trade away Devonte adams they use both first round first rounders to take defensive players when they could have made a deal for, oh, I don't know, uh, a game-changing difference maker that might win a Super Bowl for the Eagles and A.J. Brown, or I don't know, a team that took a shot like Miami, taking another shot yesterday, of course, with the big offseason move bringing in Tyreek Hill. Am I missing somebody? Amari Cooper? There's another one. The Browns got him. What are they, fifth rounder? For a fifth rounder, they got his services. So to me, it's a little bananas, and I don't quite understand why it's happening. Uh, and Hamilton is here. That's who I keep looking over because, like, I just, it's, I just don't get it. I feel like it's like a stubbornness thing. Like Goody's like, not that he hates Aaron Rodgers, but it's like everyone's telling him to do something. So he's like, I'm not doing it, even though it's for the best of the team. Yeah, I feel like it almost has, it, it almost has to be at this point. Uh, as you said, three years of this now. And we've gotten enough of a sample size this season. We're halfway through the year, pretty much. And this offense isn't working. As you said, the 26th ranked offense in the league. The run game's gotten going, but it hasn't even seemed like they've make, made positive steps in that passing game. It's still a slog to get through the game. We saw it again on Sunday night. I just don't know. 
what the answer is here, OBJ. unless it is OBJ. Am I crazy that's the to only think answer. that could be the move? No, I think it, it it almost has to be at this point. It's the only rational explanation for why they wouldn't have made a trade. Before you joined our show, I was saying to, to guys like Brandon Marshall, people who come on, or Chris Collinsworth, I think, too, like, that's going to be the move. It's the best football fit. It's going to happen. But, I mean, does o, will OBJ fit well there? Sure, right? Like, yeah. it's going to be great. Will he want to go to Green Bay? and live in Green Bay, that I don't know, but it wouldn't be that dissimilar than going to Buffalo. Like, if there's rumors, of course, that he'll sign with the Giants. So it's a very crazy, unless unless we know, you know they know something that we don't, he's going to have tons of bidders for his services. Yeah. And I don't know that they're, they're never aggressive when it comes to getting him options, so why would they be aggressive for OBJ now? That's a good point. But, yeah, but it is only half a season, so the commitment on their standpoint wouldn't be as much. The commitment on OBJ's standpoint as far as living in Green Bay, again, only half a year. It's not like he's stuck there for a really yeah. long period of time. And you get to play with one of the best quarterbacks that's ever played the game. It would make a lot of sense to me. You also just wonder how long is it gonna t would it take him to get acclimated coming off of that knee surgery, um, learning a new playbook, things like that. Yeah. But I think... With him and Aaron Rodgers, I think they can get on the same page pretty quickly. I did like hearing we had Victor Cruz in here, obviously a good friend of, of the you know former teammates, all of that. And Victor saying, you know, what is he doing right now? I bet you he's at the gym. Like yeah. he would have bet money on the fact that like that's he's working on his body. That's the kind of guy he is. So I'm not worried about him not being 100 percent or not being able to, able to acclimate. I'm worried that they're not going to make the move, especially yeah. when there's pressure here in our backyard. And you see all the beeping going on. Those are the Matt Jones are pissed Giants <laughs> fans making it known because there's another head scratcher. And that's what we do here on Up and Adams. We break poop news. And we also talk to the fan bases that are disgruntled the day after the trade deadline. And I would say the Giants are right up there with the Packers because they decided to stand pat and do nothing. Almost everybody, myself included. Okay, so they get rid of Kadarius Tony, and that's some sort of precursor, right? That's the aperitif to something else happen, but evidently not. And they also did not move Kenny Galladay. And sure, that might be part of the reason why they didn't sort of feel the need to add because he might be coming back as we see Joe Shane uh, was talking about it, right? Didn't he say that he hopes to get him back after this week's bye? So that's huge. And if he can return, though I don't have faith in it, to being a thousand yard receiver that we have seen him be, maybe that's the feeling there with Shane and company and Dable, who I do have faith in. Like that, they have this Kenny, they've got the second rounder, Wanda Robinson, they have Darius Slayton, and that's sort of enough for the G men to get it going. But you grew up a Giants fan. This is a bummer to see they didn't make a move. Yeah, I think a lot of fans are frustrated because they have gotten off to such a good start, and I don't think there is a lot of faith in the fan base from Kenny Galladay. Shane did leave the door open to yeah. the possibility of OBJ coming into coming what back did he to New say? York. Did he just say like? He, he said he said he's open to the idea. He was asked about it. It sounded like you know for him to say that for a general manager to show that maybe tip his hand a little bit. I feel like there has to be something there. Um, but I think the reason they didn't make a move, and I think this is something Giants fans have to keep in mind, is that this year wasn't really supposed to be playing out this way. They're not supposed to be 6-2 and two right now. I think everybody kind of signed up. This is a three-year three, three year plan, really, to turn this organization around because of some of the cap issues they had, things like that. And I don't look at this team as being a player away from going to a Super Bowl, winning a Super Bowl. So I like... The fact that Joe Shane and Brian Dable are willing to be a little patient here, continue building this team. Yeah, like, because I think it's about, it's not necessarily about this year. I think they're going to make the playoffs, and that's going to be a really successful year to build off of. They're playing long ball. They're not freaking. They're not one player away from making. I mean, yeah, but they kind they're of are. they're still arts, digging out. But it's been so long since it's been exciting. I know. Just go make a move. I know, and I think that's what's frustrating for fans, but I think you don't want to sacrifice the long-term plan yeah. to do something short-sighted right now. Um, because, again, I just, you know, I don't see it as a team that's going to be winning a Super Bowl this year with what, with what they have, and I yeah. don't think they're that one player away. So I like the fact that they're sticking with the plan and they're going to continue to build this team because they're still digging themselves out of some of those cap issues too. Yeah. And you don't want to put yourself in a worse situation with that going forward as well by getting a guy like a Brandon Cooks, let's say. Are you mad for Mark Voto, born and raised in yeah. New York, getting get somebody? You're mad? <laughs> Do you do? Yes. All right, we'll see. So I'm, go I'm going uh, on with Carton later today. Big New York sports show. I'm going on with him and Evan Roberts, who I know, who visited us on Good Morning Football, and I'm excited yeah. to, to hear their takes. I wonder what they would make of your Pollyanna 
optimism patients take. I'm going to guess they're going to not like that. <laughs> Probably I, might, not. I might try to sell that as my own and see if they take the bait. So uh, excited <laughs> to hang out with those guys and talk New York. Honestly, the day after the trade deadline, I did not think we would be talking about Trey Lance, but we're going to work him into this conversation because if we're looking at what happened with the Dolphins, they not only land a pass rusher in Bradley Chubb, that move completed uh, Miami's haul as a result of the Trey Lance trade. So this is a really cool FanDuel graphic that I loved seeing, so we're using it on our show. Great job by them. The Dolphins got three picks. Let me explain. Three picks as a result of that Lance trade. They used them to take Jalen Waddell. Then they trade for Tyree Kill and now trade for Bradley Chubb. So I'd say that's a pretty masterful job. And we're going to give a little love to general manager Chris Greer because that's amazing. And uh, I must say Miami is set up beautifully to make a push for the playoffs. And maybe not only that, but honestly to contend for a Super Bowl. And I'm not really counting out this year for that, but I'm definitely not counting it out in seasons to come. Yeah, and I think Chris, Chris Greer has gotten criticized over the years mm -hmm. at times, and I think this was just a brilliant long-term play uh, to turn that number three overall pick from that they end up sending to San Francisco into three star players, and I think Bradley Chubb is an addition that is really going to help out this defense. You know, they've had some issues defensively. They haven't been able to generate a consistent pass rush. Now mm -hmm. they have a real top-tier edge presence. How do you, let's talk Odell really quick. And tweet us where he should go, at Up and Adam Show. He must love that he's now bell of the ball, and he kind oh, of yeah. played it perfectly. Now trade deadline's over, and there's a ton of receiver-needing teams that are going to compete. Is there a fit that sticks out to you, or does your gut tell you anything? Or like your football acumen, does it tell you where you might go? I really think the Packers is the most natural fit. I really do. I think that's where he's most needed. I think that's where he could have the biggest impact and, so. and put up the biggest numbers as well to try to earn a contract going forward. Because I think while the Giants would be really fun to see, yeah. they're still going to be a run first team, I think. I think that's still going to be their identity this year with how they're built. I think the opportunities are going to be there more for him yeah, to we, showcase himself. You want to talk about this a lot when we try to think of landing spots for like, like Sean Payton, right? So friend of the show, Sean Payton, where's he going? What's important to him, right? Yeah. Control of everything, the most control he can have over what's going on in the building. Uh, and, you know, quarterback. He actually says yeah. it's, it's, it's not as important, the quarterback, because you can find your own, you can make it work. So for Odell, it's just interesting to think about what's important to him. And even more interesting, he likes being talked about. He likes all the mystique. But he also isn't, you know, he's got plenty of venues, myself included, Odell. I've talked to you. Brandon Marshall's hitting him up. Everyone, you know, I, I imagine Von Miller on his podcast. You think Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey are asking him to come on the show? He's getting hit up from every angle from these player podcasts. Come talk to us. Tell us maybe what intrigues you, what your landing spot is. Increase maybe your leverage, your bankroll, your whatever, the bag of money that you might secure. He's yeah. not doing any of it, and that's fascinating to me. Yeah, and I think that says how committed he is to Agreed. his football career. Agreed. And I think going to a place like Green Bay, like, can you imagine the storyline if he goes there and helps Aaron Rodgers resurrect this team and they go on and take the Packers to the Super Bowl? They and go on this amazing run. Then he comes back to the Giants and they go on some amazing run. That, and you're back in New York. That too. I don't but, know. Do you really want, like, a, is he going to get rid of that tattoo of New York on his back and do, like, a Lambeau field with a bunch of cheese heads on top of it? <laughs> I just don't see it happening. All right, coming up, we're going to do trade deadline grades. Look at everyone's... It's like a laugh track in the background. Everyone's forced to laugh. It's so awful. All right. New York-style twist. Mark Ingram is on the way.